Last week was a bore. This week, awesome guitars galore. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly mod collection demo shop recap. And let me tell you, this week was fantastic. So here's what the page looked like completely updated. There were quite a few like players grade models and then some other ones that were interestingly modified. You got a couple of cool custom finishes in here. I mean, there's something for everybody this week. Here's the ones that stood out to me. Starting with Crimson Candy Glitz. This started life as a regular 50s Les Paul standard from the original collection, but they gave it this really sweet metallic red finish to it. It's not a burst anymore, it's just a metallic finish, so it's darker in some areas and lighter in other ones depending on your lighting situation. But the fact that they mixed black plastics with this like mother of pearl, that works really well on this finish. And then they went as far as giving it one of these fingertail pieces, which generally you only find on really high end arch top guitars. And then to cover over the stud holes of the original stop bar tailpiece, they put one of those cool custom made plaques on it. This is one of those guitars where it probably would have been cool if they would have did the back in the same finish. But at the same time, the side profile view, sparkle red with the natural sides, it kind of reminds me of like the 70s Les Paul Sparkle Top Deluxes. All that for about the same price as a brand new one. That was definitely worth it. Similar to the last one, we have Azure Flash, which I'll be honest, I didn't even realize this was also a 50s Les Paul standard that had been made over. I thought it was like a cheaper tribute. That blue finish, for some reason, just looks kind of cheap to me, but it almost appears it might actually have a darker border, and then it's a lighter color in the middle. It's either that or it's just a metallic finish playing with us. But this would have started life as a P90 gold top, so they've just swapped those out for mini humbuckers, which you can do, gave it a new blue top finish, and there you go. Wasn't my favorite this week, but it was also cheaper than the really cool one. And oh, that's interesting. It almost looks like you can see the original gold finish underneath it. So this is really blue over top of gold. So that'll be slightly different, kind of like Jimmy Page's number three. It has red shot over gold, so that gives it a different hue. And once again, awesome side profile view. Sparkle top, natural back. But perhaps the crown jewel this time was this Les Paul custom done up in what they called molten orange for a little under $5,000. This has like snakeskin vibes to it, but I also understand where the name came from. This is a really cool custom finish for a Les Paul Custom. Now, unfortunately, they didn't do the back. That would have just taken this guitar to an extremely new level. Like have this finish, but on the neck too. Oh man, that would have been fantastic. Gibson, please do more of this and do the entire guitar. I don't care if it might seem like too much. I can see a lot of people liking that. I tried to buy this one, but it got away from me because Gibson's website literally cannot handle the traffic. The pages were taking forever to load, and I do not have slow internet. I'd say I actually have pretty fast internet. So that means it's Gibson's website that cannot handle the traffic that they're pulling when the mod collection updates. So I was trying to buy three different models this time, and I just couldn't get the pages to load, so I lost a couple of them, like this Molten Orange, and another one that we'll talk about in a minute. So I really hope Gibson can get their website up and running to handle the amount of traffic of people visiting when this place updates, because before this, they never really needed a website that could handle as much traffic as it can bring in, all at the same time anyways. Next up, check this guy out. It's a Les Paul CM Black, except for you can't call it black anymore because it's called Deep Red. So we've seen these in the demo shop quite often lately, but now they went as far as refinishing one. I'd be curious if they actually took the original black finish off or if they just shot it over in red because that looks really dark, like the black could still be there. But these were really thin satin finishes anyways, so it's kind of hard to tell. But as of right now, this is the only factory issued non-black CM black to exist. You can check out this review and demo if you need to learn more about them, but they have an FRX system on them, which is a top mounted Floyd Rose, which I mean, you can remove that if you really wanted to. But get this, it's not just that they refinished it in red, they actually left the original black finish, it's either that or they've just put a new gloss black on it, that's almost what it looks like in this photo. But then you've got a really extended long red stinger on this. That matches so well with the black tuners right there. This is such a cool iteration. If you've been wanting to add a CM black to your collection, or if you're just collecting all the black models, this one they went as far as even changing the truss rod cover to say red. Fantastic. The only Gibson CM red. <laughs> I love it. 
It wasn't one of the ones I wanted to buy, but all things considered, seeing as they can sell original ones for about $1,700, it wasn't that badly priced. Ah, and now this darn thing, okay. This is one that I wanted to review, and I didn't lose it to the pages being slow. I actually lost it because the Gibson cart actually stopped working. This is what would pop up as I was trying to go to the checkout. Like, it'd let me view my cart, but it wouldn't let me check out. It just kept saying, this page isn't working. So I was sitting here for a good 10 minutes, like, refreshing this, like, come on, come on, come on, I don't want to lose that one. Because this was the third guitar that I tried to buy, and it was after I bought my other one. Circling back on the leftover listings, I was like, you know, this thing's actually pretty cool. It's one of the newer cherry finished Les Paul specials. They added a middle P90, so no longer just two P90s, and then they swapped out the bridge P90s covered to kind of make it look like a junior. So this is a mix between a Les Paul Junior and a special. And I love triple P90 guitars, but I really love what they did with this pickguard situation. So it looks like they took a J200 pickguard and just chopped it up and then drilled it on there. It's unconventional, but it works so well. I love that dark tortoiseshell pickguard. They even did that for the poker chip, mixing the cream hardware with that beautiful red finish. The ambered over knobs match those little dots within the J200's pickguard. Sure, it would have been nice if we could have had something fancier on the back, but it still looks nice. I just wanted to review this one, because a brand new special I believe is 2000 so it's actually a discount. See, at first I thought this was a junior that got converted, and I was a little bit sketchy on that price, but then once I read special, I was like, alright. But unfortunately, I missed it to the cart glitch. But that's all right. When I read down here that it has three volumes and a master tone, I was like, meh, I don't like that version of Gibson's. Sure, it's more versatile, but I prefer neck, middle bridge, and bridge on a three-way toggle switch. Next up, we have Les Paul Jr. Stunt Plane. I had this in my cart, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this. But then I had a change of heart. It's like, mm, nah, I don't think I want it. So I took it out of my cart, risking losing the other guitar that I wanted because the pages were still slow. But I just decided I did not want this. It kind of reminds me of the Atari logo, but it was black, white with the red, kind of a racing stripe. But we had just reviewed a couple of juniors, so I didn't really want to review it. But what made me put it in my cart in the first place is I love the reverse stinger they've got going on here. So it's fantastic that they did the entire guitar in this racing stripe finish, but I decided to let someone else have it. But I thought they did a particularly nice job finishing this area on the guitar. I mean, sure, we've got some tooling mark or something on the side of the rosewood fretboard, but generally Gibson finishes are pretty sloppy right here. But they have not only a black layer, a white layer, looks like another black layer, and then a red layer all in that same area. They did a lot of masking there. So mod collection guy who did this one up. Nice. We saw the next color in the Flying V collection. It's a redhead. Well, maybe more orange. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but they matched the pick guard like the other ones. They gave the headstock the matching color. And you got the stinger on the back of the headstock. This one's number two out of six. We talked about this last week. It really would be cool to have the complete set of these things. And I hope that's what's happening to these. Somebody's just buying every single one. Because then they could probably get quite a considerable premium, like $3,000 each if they sold them as a complete set. This 335 Burnt Orange, I didn't look at it because there were too many other cool guitars that I wanted more, but it looks like we got a Dirty Fingers in it and a Seymour Duncan. That's a custom finish on the front that looks pretty nice. You've got the aged hardware. And then, hey, would you look at that? You also have a Stinger on that. It's kind of cool, especially at 3100 bucks. Cineburst was kind of interesting looking. It's like a, a brown metallic maybe mixed with a, an orangish red. It's kind of hard to describe those colors. It was a top refin only, so it wasn't necessarily my favorite. Then we had a Les Paul Jr. that had been interestingly modified with a mini humbucker in the bridge. It had one of those Thunderbird bases that had been modified with a new pick guard and a new pickup. It looks like maybe a new pickup all the way at the neck. And then the last one that we'll talk about this week is the Bronze Burst Metallic. I think we've seen this before, if I vaguely remember. This was interesting. It's a black center with a brown exterior. Like, I'm not quite sure. I would have preferred this to have been a teardrop shape. That's my only gripe with it so far, is that it's a perimeter burst. Then the back... <sighs> Why are they doing this? Why are they doing the brown back plates? Like may maybe it works for this color because of the top, but I think I would have preferred just straight up black, but they just left the rest of this alone. As far as top refins go, pretty darn cool. 
So that pretty much does it for the mod collection. Way better than last week. This is kind of what I was hoping for for a New Year's release. A whole bunch of sparkly finishes. Maybe Gibson did the wrong upload for that week. Who knows? <laughs> Let's move on to the demo shop. Generally, the mod collection gets all the cool stuff, but there was one golden goose that I was sad that I missed this week. And we'll start with that in our sold collection. Look at this Les Paul Studio. They called it a Lavender Burst. It's a very pretty guitar. Like, I could see some glam rock band having this, or someone's daughter just loving this thing because they did so much to it. It pretty much just started life as a white Les Paul studio, it looks like, but they gave it a light lavender perimeter burst, and then they gave it a dark purple pickup ring, which is a great contrast. The white switch tip matched with no poker chip, the white knobs, the white finish, it's just fantastic, I love it. But then to make things even cooler, they gave it a slightly matching headstock. Like, it's not a burst on the headstock, but it's just slightly lavender over... The only thing that would have made this cooler is maybe a black Mother of Pearl Gibson logo, or maybe Widow vibe it. You know, anything Mother of Pearl would have been way cooler than the silk screen. But you also have a new black truss rod cover, you got the black tuner tips. It looks quite stellar from there. Unfortunately, they, they didn't do the back, which would have been nice, but at the same time, you know, it's a nice clean look. The only thing that might have made this better is a teardrop shape burst, but at the same time, I think this might be one of those times where I actually would prefer perimeter burst because it's meant to be light and angelic and that finish works. And hey, you even get a hard shell case. But that was your golden goose this week. As far as good deals, there's an ES-235, done up in an ebony finish, 1500 bucks was a good deal for one of these. I mean, you can see other guys are asking 2000 for most of them, and these aren't even rare colors. It's always nice to see one of these guys. I'm kind of nostalgic for the cheap, like, 2010 to 2016 Gibsons, because I used to deal in these things a lot when I first started in guitars, because they were inexpensive and people liked to buy them. This one actually seems to have some high performance specs. But we saw quite a few of these this week. Like here's one of the older Les Paul tributes. I love these guitars, especially the P90 variations. They might technically be a step below a studio, but man, they're great. I love them. This particular one from 2016, I generally prefer the earlier 2010s versions, but hey, bakers can't be choosers here. These are new old stock with two year limited factory warranties. 900 bucks, great value. That used to be considered top value for those though. And here's one I think people are sleeping on. Like I could see the Les Paul Futures becoming collectibles in the future just because of how weird they are. They came stock with these Steinberger tuners that Gibson used to use on their Firebird designs. It just makes the headstock look so strange. I could see all original ones in like 20, 30 years actually seeing some sort of a premium just because of how weird they are. The 60 standard, I just thought it had a nice top, so I thought I'd show you, and 2000 bucks was a good price. This one, yeah, it's brown, interesting grain, but look, they keep putting these tiny knobs on everything. I don't know how I feel about them. But now, as far as what is currently available, it's always fun to look at these Les Paul Access Customs in the Bengal Burst, because every single one truly does look different. That whole double staining technique that they use for these results in some very interesting looking flame tops. Like this one, it's got a whole bunch of darkness there and then doesn't show up here. Maybe that's just the particular angle this one's at, because it looks fairly matched for the most part. That's kind of an interesting one, especially with the uncovered pickups. It works well with the black ring. And then they had one of the full-on access ones at 4300 bucks. This one, it's not a fancy finish, but it's got the Floyd Rose, which some guys like. I mean, generally, Les Paul accesses, they do. They have the comfort cut. They've got the full-on gloss finish. They obviously have the access cut. They've got the apex head carve on the back. And then a la Alex Lifeson, you got the Floyd. I much prefer the stop bar tailpiece, but that's just me. Here's another one that those tiny knobs were put on. This is a Les Paul Modern. Come on, man. You need big knobs for a Modern. That's like Modern mixed with vintage radios or something. And then they had a Custom Shop 355 59 reissue. You don't see these in the demo shop too often. So I thought I'd let you guys know about it. And then our last one this week. Hey, another double neck. Kind of pricey at 6100 bucks, But I mean, if you want one of these kind of new with a warranty... That's one way to get one. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the mod collection update this week. Fantastic week. 
Awesome job, Gibson. You let me down last week, but this week you came back for it in spades. I can't wait to see what happens in future weeks. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.